Hello and welcome back to our series of intellectual property videos. The penultimate video, the second to last. Um, here in part 13, we are talking about fair use. And this is one of the most litigated areas in intellectual property law. This is a really fun area of the law where the law has developed to allow us to use otherwise copywritten materials under some restrictions. As you all know by now, my name is Jeff Kaiser. I am a lawyer. Uh, I'm also a teacher in, of legal English. I've been around the world and back again and probably been to the country where you're watching this from. I love different cultures. I love language. I think it's so fun to study and I hope you agree. So without further ado, fair use. Section 107 of the Copyright Act provides the statutory framework for determining whether, determining whether something is a fair use and identifies certain types of uses, criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research as examples of activities that may qualify. So we know right from, from the beginning, we, we can look at the categories where this is allowed. Criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. These are all for the public good. These are, are things that we do that make this world a better place. At a basic level, fair use is a defense to copyright infringement. When you don't have permission to use copyrighted material, certain uses used in certain, in particular ways, are permitted. So, fair use. It's a legal doctrine that allows limited use of copywritten material without any need for permission. Like we said, the, the, the reasons are this, criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, and research. Now, how do we know when something becomes criticism or comment or news reporting? Well, we have some factors to look through to get there. The first is the purpose and the character of the use. The first factor is whether, and it really this comes down to whether the use is for a commercial or a non-commercial purpose. If I'm taking somebody else's copywritten material and I'm making money off of it, that could be a problem. That might, that might lean the balancing against fair use. If I'm using it for an educational, non-commercial reason, then it's, it's more likely to be fair use. So, so that's how we look at this. If it's making money, it might not be fair use. And of course, like all things in the law, this is a balancing test of these various factors. There's no simple, easy answer to make, make this happen. We have to look at everything. So also, just because you're making money doesn't mean that it's, that it's not fair use. The next factor is we have to look at the nature of the copyrighted work. Is it more creative or more factual? If it's a more creative or imaginative underlying work, it's less likely to support a claim of fair use. But if it's a, 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 a history book, for example, then it's probably more likely to be fair use. You also want to consider the publication status under this factor. Is it a published work? If it's a published work, it leans against fair use. If it's unpublished, then it's less likely to be fair use. Okay, this is one of the big ones. And it is the amount and substan substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. So this really just comes down to how much of the, of the work you're using. 
Here's an illustration of, of this in, in action. If you ever look at a movie, you will see, and let's imagine that there's a, a, a car chase down a, down a city street. You will undoubtedly see copyrighted material. Maybe it's a coffee cup in somebody's hand. Maybe it's a fast food place zooming by. Those are very small uses of copyrighted material. Um, it was famous uh, a few years ago in the last season of Game of Thrones where there was a Starbucks coffee cup that was left in the shot. That is what I would call unintentional fair use. Could the Starbucks corporation call up and say, hey, you can't do that? They could. But I think it was so fast and so so minor that they never would. It's fair use. Um, it's, it's, they're not using much of it and they're not using it for any, any real purpose. This is another important one. It's the effect that your fair, that your use of the copyright righted copy written material would have on the market for that underlying work. So if you use a clip from a TV show that will make no one ever want to buy that TV show, that could lean this factor against fair use. This is, this, this is in the law many times, financial factors matter. And we're not trying to destroy the value of other copy written material. But we do want to let people use things for the purposes of comment and commentary and criticism and news reporting and education. So these four factors, they all work together to determine whether or not something is considered fair use. So how about a real world example before we move on? What about somebody that takes a popular song and copies the music almost exactly, only to change the lyrics to make jokes? Weird Al Yankovic is a celebrity in the US and Europe and most of the world for more than 50 years who has been able to make these recordings based on the fair use doctrine. It's, it's whether it's commentary or criticism or what, I don't know. But this is his ability to make parody songs is the definition of the fair use doctrine. Now, with Weird Al Yankovic specifically, he has always asked permission before he uses the music. But legally speaking, he's never really needed to. This is the kind of thing that would be allowed in the fair use doctrine. So when you see uh, an image of Weird Al Yankovic mimicking the, the famous Nirvana Nevermind cover, this is not copyright infringement. This is fair use. That's my story on fair use. I think it's a great, great thing to play with and it's a, it's a lot of fun. I've, I've heard many stories of YouTubers that, that review movies, for example. They get challenged that they're not, they're not using the copywritten material in a fair use way. But they, they tend to win those fights under a fair use argument. All right, guys, that's it for this one. And we're going to move on to our very last video, one about trade secrets. Hope to see you there. And in the meantime, have a fantastic day.